Once again, we're going to do another learning video. This time we're going to take out those donut or pie charts. You know, it kind of, I kind of thought about it a little bit. It's like, how do you do a pie chart? I think the best way to do a pie chart is to start thinking about pies. So what we're going to do is pop over here to Excel. Remember, like I said, I always say it's about the data. And the best way to think about data when you're talking about pie charts or when you're going to turn it into donut charts, you just create it all about donuts, all about pies. I happen to be a big fan of pies. So I started thinking about what kind of data set would I have here. And then I thought I would do pie type an event where do i where do i eat these type of pies well like pecan pies if i go to a tailgate party or a basketball game or football game i'm all about pecan pies i i like to order my pecan pies from georgia peach world personally i find them durable and sweet super sweet right there's a lot of calories in pecan pie i won't put the calorie count on here because it just makes me feel bad nor will i put the weight watcher points on there because that'll make me feel worse on average i do five home games a year and one away game. So I always have six pies. And when I go to the out of, play, out of state away games, I always try to find the best pie places to go to. So I, I research where should I buy pie? And it was going to the ACC championship game that we discovered Georgia Peach World. And that had been now my staple for pie, at least pecan pie. And on the pie satisfaction index, and this is the index I created, which is not famous yet, but it could be famous one day, as I refer to as the pie satisfaction index on a scale of zero to 100, I certainly think that we end up with a pie satisfaction index of 60. Then I have apple pie, key lime pie, blueberry pie, pumpkin pie, banana pie, mango pie, and peanut butter pie. This um, waitress had given me peanut butter pie, a free slice because I was telling her about technology and my technology skills and how she could think about learning some skills. So she gave me a free slice of peanut butter pie. However, I must point, hey, when we had that one slice of that pie in the entire year, I did not enjoy it very much. So you got a low PSI. It tastes like peanut butter. What can I say? But there are certain types of pies I enjoy immensely, like key lime pie. I like to go to the Keys, as I told you before. I find it tasty. And anytime I'm in the Keys eating dinner, I'm good for pea line pie. So maybe I make 15 trips a year to the Keys, right down the street from us, pretty easy to get to. And it has a pie satisfaction index of 35. Maybe I can reevaluate this index and the scoring, but at the moment, I think this is a good score. As you can see, it's all about the data. So I have frequency, I have PSI, I have the reasoning, the best common source for this. That doesn't mean there's not other sources in other bakeries. I certainly went all around Miami trying to find great pecan pie, and certainly Georgia Peach World, the best on that one. But then I also tried, you know, Publix is just amazing in their pie. You know, Publix makes wedding cakes too. So if you all think about that one day, just think about it. They're just pretty amazing. Let's go ahead and take a moment. Now that we understand the data set, we didn't make it very hard, kept it pretty simple. Let's go ahead and shoot over to Tableau. You recognize the Tableau, right? We did skill development. You know, pie making is not part of your skills development for an MBA. I know that, but it's a great chart topic. And the best way to do this is create zero access like we did before. So create calculated field, zero. Formula checks out and you say, okay. I don't have to actually create this because I already have it here, zero access. But if you see if I edit it, I created it. Oop, wait, wait, if you notice, I made a mistake. We should go to the donut chart in the donut database. Then we got to create the zero access for it here. So the same way, you put the two fingers or right click, create calculated field, and then you go to donut access and you give it a value of zero. The calculation is valid. You say okay, it is perfect. Let's go ahead and label this. We're going to give our new statistic. I've always created statistics, the PSI. Pie Satisfaction Index. Now let's go ahead and create our pie. The, the other chart that the lady put together, I think she did a very nice job on this. And once we create our zero access, we just simply drag zero access to row, drag zero access to row, and we are almost done. We take this all and change the all to pie. And so you see we're making it. Now you have an inner pie and outer pie. You're basically having two pies here. So right now they're stacked on top of each other and it's kind of interesting, right? Because you're about to make these a dual access type of deal. You do that. It's all about dual access when you combine things. Now you can certainly move it to the center, entire view. That brings it over to center and we, and we got that going on. But let's keep playing with this a little bit more. 
Let's take the key to this is figuring out which is the middle and which which is the inside pi and which is the outside pi, right? And we'll try to change the color to uh, ah, we got lucky. Saw that we adjusted the size. We took the sum zero, the bottom one, and it got the inside pi, and we got the outside pi. So then we go to the other one, and let's go ahead and create a pi here. Pi size, got to make it a little bit bigger than that for pi. Ha ha, voila. We have it really big for pi, so that's great. So we have that with the inside pi, outside pi. We can adjust it. If we don't really like that, we go back to size, adjust it like that. Then, so now I have a pi. And we can make them bigger, smaller, all those kind of great things. I don't like that color. We're talking about pies. Let's go ahead and do that right color. Okay. Then we are on the outside pie. We said for on the outside pie, let's put our labels in. Let's put our label of pie type into the label. And we'll out all the pie type. Then we have to adjust the sizes like any donut chart. What what would I think we're gonna do pie on pie consumption? right? Um, not so much the event, the annual frequency of these pi. It will do that by size. That way I can get, hmm, nope. Let me back up. Not what I wanted to do. It's a color. Annual frequency to color. All right, that's a little bit better. I still think we have to do annual frequency to size for some reason. I just feel like it's, there we go. And we got like that. We got color and size. We can adjust the scale over here. different just double clicked on it I think orange to gold it just feels like a pie color there we go it feels like a pie color and you can see these are different kind of pies that I typically eat throughout the year why worth noting my total pie consumption this is a problem we can't really see that so let me go to the other one which is the white inner circle and inside the inner circle let's go ahead and do annual frequency if I can get my total pie Aha, I have 37 pies a year. Or at least slices of pie. I mean, I eat the whole pie. But I have 37 slices of pie a year. Feels like I, I need to put the the number out here if I know what percentage it is. Feels like I need to have that in the label. So let's put the frequency. Oh, not this one. We gotta go back to the other chart. And let's put the frequency on the label. Hmm, that's okay. That's all right. But I think... We can do other things here. You know, frequency, quick calculation, percent of total. Aha! So 40% of my pie consumption is all around key lime pie in the Florida Keys. Wow, I can't believe it. That is just amazing. And some of these things are kind of hidden here. Anybody can do it with the size. You gotta play with the size here to get things to go up. Here we go. Give me a little bit bigger. Well, that worked out much better. Let's go to the middle one. You gotta play with these a little bit to get them right. It's not like it's set in stone. Let's make the bigger one, the little one in the center because I want to um, get, I probably put a word in here like total pie consumption when people know what I'm talking about. So like here in annual, oops. Actually, I think I'm okay at the moment. We got that and we're good there. And it actually created my donut chart pretty well. I got my percentage total. I had these ugly lines I have to deal with though. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of these lines. Go to format. Look for lines. And the lines just set these lines to zero. Oh, they got rid of it the first time. And let's get rid of this. We don't need this outside scale, zero access, show header, get rid of that. We actually have that pretty well defined here. And you could do a table calculation. You could do all kinds of interesting things here. We'll let it go. I think we did a good job at creating it. I have 37 total pies I do throughout the year. And then I have my overall pie. I have pie satisfaction index. Maybe, maybe I can rename this. Uh, sheet name, I don't call it P sheet name anymore. Pi satisfaction index, I mean, that's just scholarly. We can put that against any journal to publish this for sure. So we have all those kind of things going. I think we're good. I mean, this is certainly amazing. We can take the 37 out as well. 
We can also put other information in. We can close this and say, do we have enough money, or not money, enough interest on the inside pie versus the outside pie? That's the inside pie, the outside pie. On the outside pie, do we have enough in the detail? Do we have other detail? We don't have source. Um, we should put source in here. Best common source, put that in the detail. Everything moved. <laughs> you saw how to do it, right? How we do it. Maybe we go back to it, maybe not. I like this one better. Same color. Maybe, I mean, I will go with it and pick source. I just didn't like how it broke out. I think I have to adjust the size again to get it to, there we go. Adjust the size, it's all about the size. And the more you adjust the size, the better off you are. And you just gotta really play with the size of the circles. Getting those kind of things. You can see how you mess with each circle and do. <clears throat> And you can just go back and forth and pick out which ones works for you. I think we did a really good job of capturing all the pie types and everything, and adjusting everything, getting rid of the lines, really defining what a pie is, getting a lot of information about a common pie, where I can get the pies and those kind of things. I have to certainly work on my Key West Key Lime Pie. Now there are some really good Key West Key Lime Pie companies, but those pies are expensive. So you could buy the Publix pie for like, I don't know, eight to 12 bucks. But if you go inside one of those other places in Key West, they could be like 70 bucks for those pies. But you know, that Publix pie is almost just as good. I don't think they make it in the Keys. The Key West people probably do. <laughs> and so those are things to think about. So I hope you enjoy our pie analysis to create a pie chart that turns into a donut chart. Maybe you can combine pies and donuts but do the same analysis for donuts. But really, we're able to have a pretty explanatory pie chart here. I'm gonna let so one thing we didn't do here in that first sample of the video, and I just need to correct this real quickly, is um, show you how to change the label in the middle. And you just click on label, and you see where it says sum of frequency. If you click this dot, you can put consumption. Consumption, enter, and say okay. And voila, you have consumption. This will end the video, and this will be satisfactory.